Hello my friends and welcome to the start of a new weekly-ish reading vlog. So the month of September has not been going to plan, which is fine. Definitely wanted to get through a lot more books than I did. It is currently Monday the 12th. Um, I've only finished three books so far this month, one DNF, and really have not gotten a start on my fall TBR. But here's to hoping that this week will go better than last week did. So the plan for today, I am currently listening to The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan Ha. I am, I am currently 17% of the way through. Um, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I literally have no idea what's going on. Like I, I'm, the story's not confusing or anything like that. I just, I'm too early in to really know what's happening. But we have two sisters, um, C and K. K is a 16 year old STEM prodigy. Her sister C has gone missing. We're following her perspective and with her sister being missing, but then we're also following her sister C's perspective who has apparently washed up on this abandoned island and is trying to find her way off of it. She wakes up having no memory, um, like she has amnesia, she has no idea really who she is, what she's doing there, how she got there. Um, all she knows is that she has her sister Kay that she needs to get back to. That's her, that's all she knows. Um, this takes place in this futuristic, world where we've had lots of uh, climate catastrophes and there are these eco cities that people now live in um, there are still people who live out in the wild of the world but it's very dangerous because of the severe change in climate our main character k is living in one of these eco cities and that's pretty much all i know so far c has made an attempt to leave the island which didn't go so well and now we're kind of back to square one so i'm like i'm not really enjoying it because I don't really have much of a story yet to enjoy, but I'm, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. I'm definitely interested in seeing where this goes. So that's what I'm listening to. I'm hoping, hope, hoping, <laughs> hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping to get to, um, get through most of this today. Today was supposed to be my day off, but I got called into work. So I'm going to be going into work later on. So I'm going to try to get as much done, uh, before then as possible. We'll see how it goes. And then I'm also physically going to be starting The Weight of Blood today, finally. I'm buddy reading this with Tasha, from Mood Reads with Tasha, and I'm very, very excited. This is one of my most anticipated reads of the year. I love Tiffany D. Jackson, and this is her Carrie retelling. So very excited to be reading this. Also, I just discovered with The Ones We're Meant to Find, I don't know if I knew it looked like this and forgot, but look how pretty this is underneath the dust jacket. Absolutely stunning. And the end papers are gorgeous as well. Not that that's important, but I just thought it was pretty. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing today. I might give you a uh, update when I'm about like halfway through this and let you know how it's going. And if not then, then I will come back to you once I finished it. I just started filming this update and realized that I was not recording. So here we go again. <laughs> I have a reading update for you. I am currently right now uh, exporting my weekly reading vlog that I wanted to get up days ago and just haven't had the time. But like I said, I do have a reading update for you. I finally finished The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan Ha and I didn't, I did not like it. Um, so unfortunately, um, a very interesting world, but not the point of the story. And so we don't get too, too much of that, which was a little disappointing, but at its core, I think the main theme of the story is this sisterly relationship between K and C um, and that that bond, that familial bond and what we do for the ones we love and things like that. And while I am always one to love a good sibling relationship, especially between sisters, I feel like it started off great, but as the story went on, it got messier and messier. And I'm not talking about like drama or whatever, I'm talking about like the plot got messier and messier. and the the bond and the the whole the fact that we were leaning so heavily on the sisterly bond and the sisterly relationship that started to completely unravel especially once we found out what was really going on once we got all of those great reveals um towards the end of the book which you know were exciting and i like the way that was done the point of the story once we find out what is really happening like that just completely unravels and it turns into what was the, the point? What was the point? 
of the whole story. Um, so yeah, it got worse and worse, and he got to the end, and I was I was very disappointed, unfortunately. So this ended up getting. Do you ever have neighbors that you just feel like every single day they're doing something in their yard? I'm sorry if you can hear the noise in the background, but I'm gonna keep going. So anyway, ended up giving this a two out of five stars. A little disappointing, unfortunately. But I don't have a problem with the author's writing, and I would definitely pick up another book by them. So there's that. As of right now, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I was supposed to start The Weight of Blood at the beginning of the month. Um, I was buddy reading this, uh, supposed to be buddy reading this with Tasha. We, we've both been really busy and I have not picked it up yet. So I'm hoping to do that today. I did um, decide to go ahead and spend one of my credits on one of my audible credits on the audiobook because um, that's just how I've been consuming books lately. I, I don't seem to have the focus to sit down and physically read a book <laughs> right now in, in my life. So that's, that's what's working for me. Um, I did sample the audiobook and I liked the narrator, so hopefully the audiobook will work. I'm gonna start listening to it today and see how that goes. Um, another book that I picked up is The Dragon Republic. This is a book that is definitely on my fall TBR. I just, I was planning or hoping to have gotten through more of this like unhauled project books first before I went into my main fall TBR. But here we are, I really wanted to read it and I haven't gotten that far in because once again, life. Um, but I am 68 pages in. I stopped in the middle of a chapter like an animal, <laughs> but it's okay. I do want to continue reading this. I do also have the audiobook to help me out. I really enjoy the narrator. Um, things are really taken off in this. It's been a while since I read the first book, so it took me a while to like remember uh, people and characters around Rin, because obviously I remember Rin, she's the main character. Um, but I've, I've gotten right back into it, so that feels good. And I, I'm guessing this is gonna take me a while because it is quite the chunky book. But like I said, I'm gonna take my time with it. I'm gonna focus on this. We'll see how it goes. currently 
Tuesday, the 20th. So last week, I, I worked six days um, out of seven, and it was crazy and busy, and I'm exhausted. Uh, but it's a new week. I do have a reading update. I finished The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. I'm pretty sure I told you that I was starting this. I can't remember, but this was interesting and it was really hard for me to figure out how I was gonna rate it. I actually finished it on Sunday, I think it was, and it took me a while to like figure out uh, how I felt about it. But in typical Tiffany D. Jackson style, it is, uh, incredible and traumatic at the same time. Look up content and trigger warnings of any of any particular book really, but like specifically when there are things that are triggering in a book, I do try to mention that you should look up content warnings. I don't like to give them on my channel just because of spoilers and whatnot. But I never take my own advice and it's it's not no matter how good of a place I'm in, when I pick up a Tiffany D. Jackson book, I always get triggered. So if you are gonna read this, uh, especially if you are a person of color, especially if you are black, please look up content warnings. Um, there's a scene in here that absolutely broke me. Besides that, this was excellent. So this is a Carrie retelling and it's told very similarly to the original Carrie in like, except we have like a, a podcast element in this one. So we're getting the podcast. I listened to the audiobook and the audiobook is excellent. Like very well produced. The podcast element makes it such a great book to listen to, to get that experience. And it has this podcast element. It has like news articles and stuff like that, which is pretty much how the first carry was told. I kind of wish that we had gotten more like we were in Maddie's head more. Maddie is the main character. And if you're familiar with the original Carrie at all, even if you just saw the movie, it's pretty much the same story, except our main character, Maddie, is a black girl who is white passing. She was told that her mother died in childbirth and she lives with her white father who is extremely abusive, physically, religiously, and the, the story is very racially charged. It takes place, when I first saw the synopsis and saw that it was taking place during a school's first integrated prom, I thought it was gonna take place in like the 70s. <laughs> um, it actually takes place in 2014. There are still places in this country where things like that happen. This little town in Georgia, I think it is, yeah, in Georgia, they have uh, a white prom and a black prom. The undertones in this, the theming of this, just everything was spot on. The writing in here, absolutely immaculate. The atmosphere in here was heavy. It was so heavy <laughs> and raw and the characters in here felt like real people. The conversations in here, it was excellent. It was, it was almost perfection. The problem I personally had with it was more to do with like personal preference. So the first thing is that I, I just wish we were in Maddie's head more, like I mentioned. Also the ending of this. This ending left so, like I had so many questions at the end of this, so many questions. And I just, I wish I could get them answered. I, I would love a book too. I know that that probably won't happen and it probably isn't necessary, but I just, I wanted more answers. I wanted to know what happened. But I think this was good. I think it was good where it ended, especially considering the fact that I was buddy reading this with Tasha, like I mentioned, and we had so many theories about what happens at the end, like what the future looks like for Maddie and these characters. And I think that that shows how much the ending really did work because here I am thinking about what could be and what really happened and all of that. So I ended up giving it four or 4.5 stars, a very high four star. Tiffany D. Jackson at this point is an auto buy author for me. I will pick up everything that she writes because damn, you know? So this is done, yay. It only took me, you know, the full seven days to read it, but it's fine. I have not made any more progress in The Dragon Republic. My audiobook actually got returned to the library because I was listening to that on audio. So I don't know if I'm gonna pick, actually, our next buddy read for the month is More Do by Alex Phoebe. This is really washed out because it's so light. So I guess I'm gonna pick this up next. I'm gonna start it today and see how far I get into it. I'm, I've completely given up on the whole book a day thing. Like it's not happening. It's already the 20th of the month. Good morning. Look at me updating the next day. I am 34% of the way through More Do. 
um, by Alex Phoebe and I don't know what to think of it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go on a rant right now about synopses, okay? Um, this is why I don't like reading synopses and I don't think they're helpful. I think they're harmful more than anything, okay? Maybe it's just me, but just when you read a synopsis, you expect to get a certain story. And then when you don't get that certain story or the synopsis amplifies a very small part of the book or nothing that is talked about in the synopsis happens until 50% or more of the way through the book, it's, it's complete, it's harmful, okay? Because you're not getting the story you're expecting. And I feel like that's the case with this book. So the synopsis mentions the master and it talks about this master who feeds on the corpse of God and that's how he gets his power and our main character Nathan gets sold to the master out of desperation because they're very poor her mother or his mother doesn't know what to do she's literally selling herself in order to eat to make ends meet while his father is sick and cannot get out of bed. So th those events happen out of desperation. She tells him to go to the master. She sells him to the master, but the master doesn't take him. So he leaves all disappointed. Well, he's not disappointed because he didn't want to work for the master, but she's disappointed and they don't know what they're gonna do about money. And then he gets approached by this man who wants him to become a part of his like street gang. So th the book so far, 34% of the way through has been nothing but him going on job after job. I don't know where the story is going, but there's also this element of Nathan having, that's his name, I don't know if I mentioned that, Nathan is the main character. Nathan having this spark, they call it, and it's some kind of magic that he doesn't really know how to use yet. He's doing these jobs and also trying to figure out how to use his magic, which his father has always told him never to use. So that's what's happening the first part of this was a little bit confusing this is definitely one of those stories that just throw you right into the world doesn't give you any information doesn't tell you anything about it doesn't explain anything the tone of this um is not what i was expecting it to be i was expecting it to be like more whimsical although whimsical is not the right word just kind of more silly I guess, um, which I haven't really gotten here, but the atmosphere is very strong. It's it's very gritty. I like that part about it. I just don't know where the story is going, but only 34% of the way through, so I'm sure I, I will figure it out at some point. Hello, my friends. I don't remember the last time I spoke to you, but it is currently Saturday the 24th, and last night I finally finished Mord You by Alex Phoebe. <laughs> um, listen, I feel so bad that I had to give this such a low rating. I gave it one star. We're following Nathan. Nathan's a 13 year old boy. I don't know if I mentioned that. This is adult dark fantasy. I would say borderline horror because some of the images in here were just creepy, cringy, and unsettling. It was great. The, the one thing that this book had going for it was the atmosphere. It was so strong. It was very dark, very gritty, very unsettling throughout the entire thing. I appreciated that and that was like the highest point of, of rating for this book was the atmosphere. Nathan is a boy who just kind of gets carried around from here and there. Like I was, I remember kind of ranting about the synopsis and how if you read the synopsis, it doesn't give you anything. <laughs> like it doesn't, not that it doesn't give you anything, but it tells you, it paints this picture of a story that nothing like that happens in, in this book nothing ha like that happens and we don't even know about the corpse of god until 80 percent into the book it's the only time it's mentioned there was no plot to this it was nathan getting moved around from here to there i know i told you about him joining like a street gang and doing jobs and we're like what is this leading up to and then he gets pulled in another direction by the master and the, the, like he has no autonomy and like maybe that's saying something I don't know but he is overpowered um, once he tr discovers his power completely overpowered but people are constantly taking his power away from him and it leads to an ending that was so incredibly unsatisfying throughout reading this book I thought okay maybe three stars I got a little bit further and I said maybe two stars it's when everything was revealed about things that I was like this is probably gonna be a two star, but when the ending happened, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I cannot believe that I sat through this entire book and it, it took me a while to read because it's so wordy. It's so overwritten. The writing's 
great, don't get me wrong, his writing is beautiful, but it's so overwritten. Do you know what I mean? And I can't tell you specifics because it would be giving away spoilers, but like his mother in here, completely underdeveloped and made no sense. The actions that she took, the, the whole thing that kind of started the story, her being so desperate, they're living in the slums, they're starving, and her being so desperate for money, for food. It didn't need to be that way, that's all I'll say. And once we found out why it didn't need to be that way, all of her actions made zero sense. I want to show you this because this is over 100 pages. Do you see this? This part of the book, this is the glossary, okay? Over 100 pages of a glossary that apparently would make sense of more things, but why should I have to read over 100 pages of a glossary to find out what the author was trying to say the world building, all of that should be built into the story. I have never used a glossary in my life, okay? In my life. I am a seasoned fantasy reader, okay? And anytime there's like a strange new word mentioned or something like that in a story, you can pretty much figure it out after a few times it's mentioned because of context. There was no such thing in here. It was an absolutely pointless story and I hated it and I gave it one star and I'm so disappointed. So today I'm actually going to be getting on a plane and heading to a friend's wedding and I decided to bring two books with me on the plane. I've got them in my protector, what are these called again? Book sleeves, book sleeves. So I've decided to bring uh, the Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Honestly, I really don't think I'll have a lot of time for reading, but it is like a six hour flight. So at some point I'll be doing some reading. Um, I brought The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, which I'm very excited to get to. This is my, my second book. So like if I get through the first one, then I'll be picking this one up. Um, and the first one is Seasonal Fears by Shauna McGuire because it's definitely time for me to read this book and I wanted to get this read before the end of the month. I will update you as soon as I can. Hello my friends, I am here to very quickly close out the end of this vlog. I made it back home safely yesterday morning from my friend's wedding in California. It was a great time. The two books that I brought with me, completely useless. I did not do a lot of reading at all. Um, both flights were mostly at night. So didn't have the opportunity to read much and obviously while I was there, didn't read much. Let's go over what I read in this vlog. Um, I think this was in this vlog. I finished The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan Ha. I gave it, um, did I talk about this already? Was this this vlog? I don't know. If not, I'll just cut out this part of the video. But I finished this and I gave it two stars. Um, and then I finished The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. I know for sure that this, that I read this in this vlog. And I gave it four, four and a half stars. And then finished More Dew, uh, which was incredibly disappointing and ended up giving it a one star. I feel really bad. And I know I've mentioned this before. I know I have a lot of new people here, so I'll mention it again. I rate based on enjoyment nowadays. I started doing this the past year and a half or so. It used to be that I would rate something like this once or three stars, maybe two stars, because I like to be generous with my ratings, or I used to, um, but now I'm, I'm being more honest in my ratings. So this is not a bad book per se. Don't let this discourage you from picking it up, but for my personal reading taste, it was bad. It was bad for me. <laughs> so I gave it one star, and that's that. So I finished these three books in this vlog. That, that is the end. That is the end of the September vlogs. Didn't get much reading done this month, at all. I don't know how many books I finished this month, but it was like maybe maybe six or seven. I don't know. Um, not as much as I wanted to, but that is absolutely fine. So I am filming this last clip on Wednesday, the 28th of September. Um, literally about to get slammed by Hurricane Ian. So if you live in Florida, please be safe. We are as prepared as we can be where we are, and we're just uh, we're just waiting and uh, watching and bracing. So I hope that you guys are okay. And uh, you know, like don't be stupid, just be safe. <laughs> That's all, That's all I wanted to say. But yeah, I am gonna end the vlog here and hopefully get it up before I potentially lose power. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Talk to me down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about any of the books that I read, talked about in this vlog. Oh, I did actually, uh, real quick before we go, I did actually start 
reading seasonal fears on the plane so i am currently 50 pages in and i'm really enjoying it so far i mean it's only 50 pages i don't know where the story is going to go but i'm excited to continue which you can look forward to in the next vlog hopefully but yeah that is gonna be it i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up talk to me down in the comments don't forget to hit subscribe if you have not done that already and i'll see you in my next one bye guys be safe